Ha ha, that looks really cute. Welcome to the Mike Cassidy Photography Podcast. Thank you, big voice in the sky. My name is Mike Cassidy, and I'm a boudoir photographer from New Jersey, and this is my show. I get to talk to some of the best photographers in the world to find out how they got started, what sparks their creativity, and what hurdles they've had to overcome to get their businesses going. Along the way, we'll probably have a few laughs, but I'm here to have in-depth conversations about all kinds of things you've always wanted to know from the best out there. So stay tuned. You never know what you may learn. Are you dancing? Why not? My name is Michael, and I am your dancing neighbor. We need a little happiness and dancing right about now. Are you getting a bit stir-crazy? I've been locked up for a few weeks now, and you know I'm located in New Jersey, not too far from New York City, which is the epicenter of the virus outbreak here in the U.S., and it's it's a serious situation. We're still in peak pandemic mode here, and it looks like we may have a few more weeks to go till this starts to settle down and, and passes. As this comes into your area, just be mentally prepared to be locked up for like four to six weeks. You know, stay happy. You'll get through it. What have I been up to? Well, a lot, actually. I've been working on a website for this podcast, and I'm not a great web designer by any means. And what I'm trying to do, honestly, is probably a bit over my head, but I figured, what else is going on? So I thought I'd give it a shot. I'm making a website that's going to automatically import the podcast episodes and let people play them on the website and I'll be able to add some other features on this website in the future. I think ultimately at at some point I'm going to have some premium content available and I wanted to get the groundwork in place to be able to add those features on in the future. And think about it, actually now there is no website for this show, so don't go there. I had to move the domain domain name to its new host and I think it's still on the moving truck going to its new Um, The new website is just on a temporary domain uh, for the time being. And at the rate I work on things, it could be months before that starts to come together. But it's given me something to do. And one thing about podcasts, if you're a fan of podcasts like me, this is a good time to listen to, uh, to shows. You know, there's a lot of people producing photography podcasts out there. Basically, every topic... There are pet photography podcasts, wedding podcasts, nature podcasts, general podcasts. Uh, You know, when I do a search, say, like on Pocket Cast or Spotify for a photography podcast, there's a lot. And what's interesting to me is that you'll find shows on some app that you may not find on another. So search around a little bit. You never know what you may find. And on some things, you can even drill down to search by episode titles. And you could find some interesting stuff out there and podcasts are great to put on in the background if you're working at home just hanging out or just trying to kill some time it's fun to search for new shows to listen to it's been it's been great for me keep me busy and what else i got an email oh i got an email today from a photography site looking for me to produce some boudoir or other photography content for them they sent me some documents um what they want mostly is like writing or or video content that they can produce like uh and resell uh you get paid to create these items and there's a revenue share involved you know what's interesting about the video part of it is that you don't have to edit anything they edit and produce everything in-house so i guess you just have to produce the raw video so that can be a big time save for that part of it and i'm not really I don't think I'm a video guy. I have to think about that. This face is 
pretty scary on video, you know. One thing they sent me that did catch my eye was that this company is looking to put together like high end in quotes workshops. They want to charge like a thousand dollars or more a person to attend these workshops and uh I like the sound of that. High end. Put me in a room with a bunch of people paying a thousand bucks or more to learn boudoir and one of two things is going to happen. They're all going to commit Harry Carey or they are going to walk out of there boudoir geniuses. It's a gamble. I guess it all depends on what type of mood I'm in that day. Well, on to the show. Today's guest is Oksana Pally. Oksana is an excellent portrait, food, and branding photographer based at a strong island, or as you may know it, Long Island, which is not too far from where I am. Make sure you hop on over to her website and Instagram and take a look at her work. I'm so jealous because her photos are better than mine. Oksana is an interesting case on how your path in photography may change. She started out her career as a boudoir photographer, and now she is a super excellent portrait, food, and branding photographer. So how did that happen? Well, you'll have to listen to the show today to find out. So this is the point where I'm going to stop talking, and you can listen to Oksana. Uh, Just warn you, her photos are going to make you hungry. So stay safe. Enjoy this episode. Keep dancing. Da-da-da-da. All right, we are we are live. Oksana here. She's very nervous. No, she's not very nervous. But before we even get started, my guest today is Oksana Pally. Oksana, introduce yourself to everybody listening. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Oksana Polly, and um, I am a portrait and product photographer uh, located on Long Island, New York, uh, New York City. I travel, so that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, we're, not, we're not far from each other. And before we even get going into this, there's one thing I have to bring up with you first is that I have been following your new home now for oh. like weeks. and So I feel like I'm your neighbor. I've been, I've, been, I've been seeing everything come together. Uh, you know, watching everything like every day, seeing what's what's coming next. So this has been this has been I like watching that. It's oh, been thank exciting. you. I was wondering if I was putting too much out there because no. you know everybody always asks, everybody always wonders if I'm putting too much personal things, too many personal things out, or um, and I seem to get positive feedback where people like to see what you're doing. You know, it, to outside me, that's of it. your, I followed you from your studs all the way to your designers <laughs> and. How everything is. See, I'm like a tile person, so I love okay. to see all the tiles oh. and, and how that all comes together. So I guess the, I, I either I missed that part or it's still it's still. I'll make coming. sure I'll add more tile for but you. I, I, I can't wait. I I can't wait to see your bathrooms. It's, okay, I don't have a, a lot of tile, but I have some. I saw your wallpaper in the one, so that's so. But that's the way that all comes together. See, to me, I like art and stuff like so that's fascinating yeah, to me yeah. so that's a good job and it's 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 a big mess going all through that stuff but when it finally all comes together you're like oh and then you yeah. forget about all that trauma of yeah, all that yeah, construction and the yeah. displacement and post-traumatic and, post-traumatic house disorder or whatever it's you want to right, call it. so how long building <laughs> how long did that take from you breaking ground there too it's a long time uh well for us it's well it's our second time doing something mm, yeah. like this it's our second time building a house so it took us about a year which is yeah. not that long mm. um it takes some people longer so it was it went it seemed long but in the big it went by pretty quick. Really, yeah it's you weren't quick. homeless during the process you were in your you <laughs> we were in like, a rental yeah oh, you were, yeah so that's we were, it's it's stressful to, yeah. to do that and then yeah you know, uh, people don't understand how many thousands of decisions go in that from the little draw poles to the, the color of this to the paint colors. Yes. It's not picking the wood. Picking your wood is itself can take weeks for, for some people to. Exactly. To, and that's why I decided to um, hire someone to help me with certain right. decisions. It was right. much, much, you went much quicker and I made sure there were certain decisions I wanted to make. I wasn't sure about like darker colors and, but so it, to have another, someone with another eye, look at it and help you with that. It's was worth the money. It really was. Because there isn't enough Tylenol in this world. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's too much. That, that people can give with the headaches from going in and seeing 400 choices for hardwood and going, oh, my God, I don't know where to be. Do we want the wide ones? Do we want the short ones? Do we want the gray ones? Do we want more traditional? Do we want hand scrapey? It's overwhelming. Your head starts and, spinning once you just walk in there. You're right. And it's difficult enough for one person to do that. But when two people or so are trying to come to a decision on something like that, it really makes it even 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 worse. Well, I have to say that to that hiring a designer, it's uh, and it, it she becomes like a marriage mediator, too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she has fighting. to help us merge our styles together. So, you know, she brings something that we both like, which could could cause a conflict but it kind of avoids the conflict that would be it's true it, it's it really is the test of a relationship i think yeah. <laughs> where you find out who who you are because yeah. you know it, it really is and i've i've seen it i go through it. yeah i've been through it so it's uh it's uh you know and it's 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 a trial it can be a trial to to put all that that uh that together but enough about your home see i'm going to i'm going to play something here this music because there's something I wanted to say to you, Oksana. And I've, okay. I've never said this to another <laughs> photographer before, but your photos make me hungry. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to bring you on this, this show today to talk about this wonderful food photography. But not only that, you also do a lot of portrait work. Um, you know, so that was um, really, I, I saw that kind of work and I was like, wow. Uh, it really stood out to me. So that's one of the things we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about your portrait work. And I just had your Instagram up and I saw even you were doing some um, school photos too, which um, I don't know if that's a big thing in the Northeast. Do you find what that people are... or the uh, uh, the um, um, high school pictures? Or oh, senior, senior, senior photos. Seniors, that, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because in this Northeast, I don't know if that's such a, a big thing. So I'll ask you a little bit about your experience with, with that kind of work or if that's something new mm-hmm. um, as well. So there's a lot to talk about. You've got your hands in, in a lot of things there. But uh, as, as when I have everybody on the show, the first thing we do is we, we go back in time a little bit. And when you hear that, I have so many sound effects. It's just like too many. We're going back in time. I wish I could and what do that I, in real life. <laughs> I know. And I wish we could do that in real life. Um, we're just going to go back to when you first got involved. And why don't you just talk a little bit about how you, what, you how you started in photography or how where that where the genesis was and, and where how you sort of uh, uh, became a pro when it comes to uh, professional photography. Okay. Yes. All right. So I was studying psychology in college and I was always interested in art. And um, I actually grew up in USSR (laughs) most of my life. And I just like art was never seemed like a kind of like a business to me, like anything. So I, but I did, was always drawn to that. And I took photography classes. I took some photography courses in college and, you know, a hobby, just like a lot of photographers start as a hobby. Right. Right. And, um, You know, as a project, I needed to take some portraits and some of my friends were hairdressers and makeup artists wanted some updated pictures for their portfolios. I mean, we're talking about uh, 2008 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I did that and they just came out phenomenal. So they loved it. She did the hair and makeup and we went to the beach and we did a whole bunch of different photo shoots it became a thing it became a thing and then people started asking me to do their photos and their photos and I was kind of just doing it for fun and for free and then I kind of said oh why don't I charge for this (laughs) you know it's a lot of work and then um I I started charging for it and then that's when boudoir actually just started to gain traction I lived in I lived in Manhattan at that point and I got one uh, boudoir client who told all of her friends, and it just really became a thing without me realizing. Drawing. Um, I just finished. I finished college at that point, um, so and I was working in the city, and it became. It just I built a website. All of a sudden, I, I was just getting. Once this girl had a photo shoot with me, she posted her pictures on. Long Island Weddings, uh, something like that. It was website. a website. Yeah. And they had the forum and the chat room. And I was getting, um, I think I got like 100 messages. For them, Isn't that like, funny how that days. happens? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, oh, my God, this is like a legit business here. So I had to uh, get an LLC. I was booked up six months in advance. 
And um, it helps that back then there was not a lot of competition. Right. It was new. Well, that was the I think that was the beginning of the new resurgence of of boudoir photography, because I think it was around for a long time, but it was kind of an underground thing. Yes. Very sketchy kind of a thing. And then at some point it became okay. Right. It became cute. Women women. were empowering each other and actually posting these images on forums and seeing each other. And I was like, well, I want that for for, you know, for my Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, for my, mostly it was brides getting married and just kind of, I think like your business and they want to right. give a gift to their fiance, but there's Christmas, different so. from all works, walks of life. So someone lost some weight or different reasons for that. So they became very successful and I was doing that for a while, uh, while I was living in Manhattan and then I moved, uh, I got pregnant. <laughs> so we moved out to the suburbs and then I lost my studio. So, and I just decided to focus on my kids. And I had a little kid, and then I had two kids in a row. And just, but you, if you're creative, just like probably many of you listening, you're, you just can't kind of shut that off, <laughs> you know? So I was home and I was cooking and, co- you know, taking care of the kids. So I started taking pictures of food uh, because I didn't have portraits. So I started taking pictures of food and I, because that was what was nearby. Yeah. That's what I was doing. Like, I took pictures of my kids. Yes. But they're usually like, you know, infants and how many of those can you take mm. without driving people, you know, crazy <laughs> baby, pictures, yeah. baby pictures. And then, um, I started posting those on Instagram and that kind of took off. And I said, Oh, this is really interesting. You know, food is, you know, I love food. Everybody loves food. So I started photographing that. And slowly I started getting clients from Instagram. Just from that. Now, let me ask you, you were just like making your lunch and said, boy, this veggie burger looks good. I'm just going to start. Or were you? You've seen my veggie burger picture. I've, I, that's one of the pictures I had. And I was going to like, boy, this is. So was it, it was just your lunch and then you you started to, or were you making something just well, to kind was- of take a yeah, it was a little bit more thought out than that. It wasn't just I didn't take a snapshot because it does it does go a lot into prepping. So I would right. just say, okay, I'm going to make this and thinking I'm going to shoot, I'm going to photograph this. So I just, you know, had some props and I made sure that, you know, so I started testing. I started playing around with it, the concept of food photography and just like looking online and tutorials and things like that. So, um, not always impromptu. It was, I was cooking a lot, but Mm -hmm. I would carve out some time. Well, today I'm making this because I want to photograph it. For a specific purpose, you were doing something. Exactly. Yeah. But then my family would benefit from it and eat it. Because it it would be a delicious, (laughs) be a delicious, a delicious meal. So that's how that just came about. And was there a point where that started to get noticed? And how does that evolve? Does someone just see that and say, oh my God, you need to photograph my donuts and come down to my bakery or how did that, is there a professional part involved in that for you? Or how did that branch out? Right. So because again, I, I think when I started, Instagram was just taking off as well. I was one of the few photographers, you know, posting so many images on Instagram. And I started getting inquiries mainly from, so nutritionists, uh, recipe developers, uh, health coaches, people like that. So they would call me and they would say, well, I'm, I have a couple of recipes. Can you photograph them? Uh, then some brand, a lot of brands reached out to me mm-hmm. and, you know, some of them were, oh, we'll send you a free product and we'll do that. Yeah, so I've yeah. done a couple of those and then you just, okay, you know, there's, there's stop doing for that. The, for the of it but the, I did that for the practice and uh, exposure too. So um, I've done some of that. And then I guess then the word of mouth starts. So one, one nutritionist tells the other nutritionist and that's kind of like how, how that works. And I've, I mean, but Instagram, again, recommendations, and I've had companies from California send me their products and they would shoot them and I worked with them on a monthly basis where they would just send me product and I would shoot their social media stuff and then uh, it for every, back to them. every month. Yeah. I uh, usually I don't send it back. They don't want it back. They just <laughs> leave it with you. <laughs> I have a bite at now I get, you're doing this right from home because this is one thing I guess yes. you could do right from your. That's why I loved it. Yes. Yeah. That's why I loved it. Um, I, I could do it from home and, you know, when the kids were little, it was it it wasn't always easy. Yeah. You know, there's always bumps in the road. Distractions. Yeah, but you could, do it, you could do it as your, as your time allows. You can get in there and... and right. Uh, it's not a, you know. like a portrait. I could right. definitely... I could do Set it when everybody. they're asleep. Right. Put everybody for a nap and then come back and do the cupcakes. Yes. And, yes. And, and <laughs> 
So if I was to approach you, I imagine if I'm a company out in California and I make some cupcakes or, or energy bars or whatever the, the case may be, there's probably a lot of no, rules are the right word, but they say, do they require a shot list or is there a certain number of things that they say we have to get this, this and this kind of a shot or that they leave that up to you and just review everything and pick the ones that they like the best? No, I would get a shoot sheet um, and they would usually send me images that they like. And they want something similar within a similar image and they would write notes on it. We want something like this, but with exceptions of, you know, modifications to that shot. We want the white backdrop. We want on this, but won't you buy these props? Uh, they would want specific props if they were launching. Like say there was a, there's a, there's a food, food uh, there was a drink company that I worked with. So they were launching in a store in Texas. So they want me to, to photograph it with the Texas flag. So they do give you a lot of direction, but they do give you a little bit of flexibility. They, well, this particular company did. They said, if you, you know, think of something else and then they would want 12 shots all together. And that's what I would submit to them. And if they needed to change, sometimes they did have to reshoot certain things. You're yeah. dealing with like an art director or somebody in that, in that company or who is it typically was a your small point? company was an, an art director. Um, it's like true. the owners or the, yeah, it was, it yeah. was one of the owners. It was a small company. So it was one of the owners. Are there a lot of instances or where you thought you did something really well and suddenly they're like, yeah, no, this isn't what we need. Redo this, 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 and this. Is it is it fairly simple or is there a, a lot of back and forth or people super particular about the images that were they're receiving? It was pretty straightforward because they did send me a visual of what they want. So I kind of, I listened to them and they send notes. So they were very precise in what they wanted in their direction so it was easy to execute the only issues i had maybe sometimes i that was my mistake because i was rushing and i had kids i would they had different flavors let's say i put the wrong flavor bottle in the shot there was supposed uh, to be like uh, lemon it was my mistake so i i reshot that. that so that was totally my fault and um i would reshoot that but other than that in terms of aesthetics or quality that was never an issue mm -hmm. Because I try to do my best and I take my time and with every shot. And uh, and they find you mostly through Instagram. Uh, these companies would. And that's, that's always curious to me because like if I had a drink company in Texas, I guess you're tagging your photos or they're searching for food photographer or well, do they she, ever mention? She did not find me through Instagram. She was a client of a friend. Um, oh, okay. She was my client's friend, so they did. They work together. Used to they, work they knew together. You through so she together. met me through her, and then she ended up following me on Instagram for a while before she contacted me. She did move to California, and then because she was following me on Instagram, I was you, fresh you in her mind, and yeah. and then she said, "Well, let me work with her because I know her style, and I could." So she she decided to work with me, right? So she didn't go just looking on Instagram. Well, some some people do do that. Yeah, because I talked to 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 some folks and that's like the primary way they 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 advertise their work and and i know i don't get a lot of people that personally contact me through in, instagram because i don't see that as a great local search option like if you go to look for pizza i don't think the first thing you do is go to instagram and start right. searching it's not like oh so it's always curious to me if when someone finds somebody and they say it's through instagram if they're using very particular hashtags or it's random luck or or or, or so forth uh, i would imagine you know, a lot of that is still through Google food photographer, and then they're still going to probably search local Texas or California. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Though it's interesting to me how they find someone halfway across the country, unless that person's work really stands out or your name starts to get known in that, in that business. And oh, you have to go see Oksana. She did this, this, and this for us. And it kind of comes through, through word of mouth. Well, it kind of, it's like Instagram word of mouth, right? So if you're following your somebody that you like and then you see them working with me so they might start work following me as well um so i know like i have a client uh, healthy with Nettie. she's a nutritionist and health coach she, we work a lot together so she'll post with me we'll work together she'll post me about me in the stories and all of that behind the scenes so people see that and then they start following me and then that's and she's how on what? It's a blog or it's a blog she, or she has a blog. Yes. But she's also is very became very successful on Instagram. Oh, I see. She's a health coach. So people follow her on Instagram and, and then, then they, they see, they see stories photos. That, my photos and they say, well, you know, she's good enough for her. She's good enough for me. Right. So yeah. they ask her, who's your photographer? So they'll come to someone they respect on Instagram. So they might ask who's doing your pictures and she'll recommend uh, me or whoever she thinks 
would be sure perfect. Do it. Yeah, no, that's interesting how things spread like that. And you're getting these calls and I guess you, you ask someone like, how'd you hear about me? And they're like, oh, a friend of a friend of a friend of a mm-hmm. friend. So it's interesting how, how word travels. But not only that, there's a lot of of trust in those recommendations from, um, from people. So usually when you, you, it's interesting to me always to hear how someone finds me and they say it's like through three friends and I'm like, wow, that, but, but they must've done a good job. So getting those kind of recommendations like that is a lot of social proof that, you know, you are doing your, your, your job and it's interesting how, how things spread like that. So how has that part of your work evolved now? So are, are you getting, is that your, your focus or, or, of what you're doing or is that area still growing for you as far as the food work? Right. So this is just to reiterate that that is the best referral, I think Mm, the best way, just word of mouth, the best way to get clients. Um, Yeah. So while I was working with a lot of nutritionists and health coaches and bloggers, I was also, so because they need pictures of their food, right, for recipes, but they also need branding photography. Mm. So they need pictures of themselves, cooking, action shots, and things like that. So the world is very visual now, right? We all know we're all on social media. And if you have a brand and business, you need to be out there and people want to see who you are and just selfies just don't cut it. Right? No one knows how to use lighting or how to take pictures of themselves. Um, so that kind of was becoming bigger for me as well. So people were just saying, well, I don't really need just the food. I just need pictures of me. So then kind of it evolved. I started pivoting a little bit. So it evolved into more branding photography. So I started doing that as well. I started offering that and I realized how much I miss portrait photography. So I wasn't doing boudoir anymore. And I, um, also during that time when I was doing food photography, I my kids were growing up and they started in elementary school. I became a PTA president for two years. Oh, it's president. So that's part of like why I was just not offering boudoir anymore. I just felt like I can't. Right, it right. Was, With the kids. It was a little understand. bit conflicting too. Yeah. Like I can't. I felt like it was a little bit limiting of what I could post. And I just. So I did started mostly branding photography and product photography. So. And I fell in love with it, I have to say, working with brands and helping them just with one of my clients, for example, Nettie. So she started with a couple of thousand followers and uh, we worked together for the last five years. So every three or so months, I'll shoot her recipes. We'll do some branding shots for her cooking and action shots. And she just has blossomed on the internet. She's got over 70,000 followers, I think. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And then she has her little try but that people respect her and but just just things like that watching people's businesses grow and being a part of that helping them so it was just evolving they would call me and ask me just for a headshot and then I will ask them a series of question well what, what, what is the final goal what are you trying to accomplish what kind of shots do you really need are there for Facebook header LinkedIn Instagram do you need like behind the scenes shots and they're like oh I didn't even think of that so you give them these ideas which become a brand, like the total branding then so it's more people don't even realize they need all that to grow their business to in this day yeah especially if they're online um, that's important now for the people who want to be influencers or or whatever they choose to do. And it's a growing field. And, you know, this idea of branding photography is something that has popped up over the past couple of years, and you tend to see it more and, and, and more. And so that's your definition of it, I think, is helping somebody grow their business, um, you know, in terms of not just their their themselves, but also they're part of whatever they're they're promoting, whether it be fitness or or cooking. It kind of ram, oh, brings everything all together. It's not just the, the photos of the person you it's try to telling combine their everything. Story. Yes, it's telling their story. It's their business stories, showing their why, what they're why they're doing it, and showing their authentic personality through that. Because a headshot is just a headshot. We're I think we're now past that. People really want to see who you are, and they want to see visuals. They want you to see when they want when they find out about your business. They where they go? They go on web, on your website. They go online, and what do they see? They want to see you look professional. They want you to look smart. They want you to see like they, you know what you're doing. So, but they will also want to see you as an approachable person. You know, they want to see a friendly face, and they want to make just they want to kind of feel the connection with you. So I try to go over all these points, hit all these points before the photo should explain to people what to wear and how to to create these images that. Yeah. So that's an interesting question. So 
how does you know someone when you get that first email or or text message or or uh, DM from somebody who says, hey, you know, I, I've seen this work, and what's the process that you have from walking them from the beginning of that through through the photo? What comes before that? I guess you have to find a lot about what they're doing and getting them to that to that goal, the ultimate point of expressing themselves in the best possible way that they can. Yeah, the most important thing for me is to get them on the phone, right? Because everybody just tries to email everything. And, yeah, because, yeah. and I, I do have pre-done PDFs, and I actually have a questionnaire for them that I make them fill out. So I get them on the phone, and I ask them lots of things about their business and what they want want to accomplish with these images and with this photo shoot. We go over that. Then I make them do some homework. So they fill out this questionnaire. So I would ask them what they... Let's say, um, what are the five different brands that they aspire to? What, what is their competition? What do they want to look ideals, like? Right. Ideals. We don't want to copy, but what do you like about this brand or that brand? Um, so they answer that. Then also I make them create a Pinterest board, so which they invite me to so then I could see their vision. Because you could describe one thing and you could have it in your head, but I could have another image in my head. So right. and no, that's very helpful. Yeah. Because they can kind of, you can see exactly kind of what they're aspiring to we do. We could be on the same page. So I know what they're looking for. I know what they like. I know if they, if they put a lot of pictures that are outside well, in front of a cafe, I know that's what they want or I'm paying attention to what, like common common theme is. I know what colors that they're using. What colors are, is your brand? Do you have brand colors? So all of that. And my client just said to me recently, we were going over. Oh, she, she's getting her branding. She's like, "Wow, you're like really helping me brand myself. Like you're branding expert." I'm like, "No, I'm not." But it's just kind no, of no, no. You are. See, this is another thing that you just give taking less time to you're out of your life, and you're going to be doing this more. So it gets very involved. Yeah, and I try to help them. And I I truly do enjoy it, and I. I like helping them grow their businesses. It excites me. It just, it's, it's, it's inspiring for me. And this is where it's been, this is where it's been lately. So I do offer, I used to be kind of like more of a niche. So, right. It was just food photography. It was just boudoir photography, but I think branding and product kind of interconnected. So you could do a branding, but they might have a product. So I could shoot a photograph them and I could photograph their product. Right. When the, the the perfect or the idea there is to like health or fitness people, you right? Know, because well, that's, they can can do gym work or they can also be diet conscious and 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 so forth. If they're trying to be like a trainer or something like that, it's multifaceted. It's involved. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. Yes. With uh, with something like that, but I guess the one thing go getting back into the portrait side that brings in those geographic limitations again too because i'm guessing you typically need to work with people within a certain radius of where you are because you're going to physically have to meet up with them unless they're paying to fly you to california right, or wherever right. they are um so as far as the the actual photo shoot is that becoming more complicated is there more things to consider or or, or scenes involved or you have to get to certain locations does it get more involved when you're dealing with with branding with somebody you have to create like if they're uh, a uh, uh, a cook you actually have to be in a kitchen i guess photographing them somewhere so how does that where do you find a location or, or are you working well, at these people's I, homes? I do offer them my kitchen Okay. So I do that. Uh, some of my clients that I come see every three or so months in the city, she's in Manhattan. She has a beautiful kitchen, so I photograph her in her space. So I just bring my lighting there and we spend the whole day shooting, photographing food and her. So we'll do it there. Uh, sometimes if it's a nutritionist that I had him come in and I explain it to them, I say, well, I have a studio and I could set up a table and I could put like fruit and things like that. So we do like a makeshift setup. Like it doesn't have to look like a kitchen. It could just be some food around. So she's, she doesn't need to be cooking. She's a nutritionist. She explains it to people. So I would create, create a little bit of a set for that. Yeah. That's another complication. Uh, you know, that's, that does become involved. Like I said, uh, a moment ago, um, yeah, cause food, and I guess food, just doing the food is easier cause you don't necessarily have to be in a kitchen cause you're working with a much smaller space. Right. But when the person gets involved, there's a much bigger backdrop that needs to be accounted for. Correct. So you have to put them in that, in that set. And especially if you're working, going in, in Manhattan, it's not fun dragging equipment around. And, well, also and, props. Right. So I yeah. have to bring all the, not only my lighting equipment, but I bring, I pack out my, it's, 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 it's definitely taxing on your body cause I just 
fill up my whole trunk of the car. And my husband helped me last time. And he was like, do you really do all this by yourself yeah, yeah. every time? I said, yes. He's like, he's Bring things up to the 14th floor, you know, up and down. You, you got to charge like high rise chargers. And they're <laughs> well, yes. Things. And you have to get it out of the car into the cart right. and then into right. the elevator and out into the apartment and then pack right. it up right. again and do it the reverse. So and, and for people not in our area, we know that parking in Manhattan is not fun. It's not like you could just pull up in front of a building and there's a parking spot there and you can you can, you know, unload your car. Parking is presents a challenge sometimes depending on where you're going. In, right. In so what I, I try to do, though, those shoots, I do try to do start early Saturday or Sunday. I try to do where there's no traffic and I come in probably drive it takes me about 40 minutes to get into the city 35 40 minutes at that time and i leave at six o'clock in the morning and i'm usually there you know unpacking everything around 7 7 15 and it just eliminates a lot of headache with the traffic stuff. The traffic and, and the parking so i'm guessing in this situation too it's not just you alone you probably have to work with makeup people or are you bringing anybody with you when you go in to yeah, do that? it depends on the people so some of them have their own makeup and hair people that they schedule on their own uh, when it's my space, when people come to me, I do, I do have do, someone come have in. Someone come in. I try to have one person that does makeup and hair together because that's a big part of it. That's a big part of getting that look too. Is the coordinating? Styling. Yeah, I I think that that's probably one of the most challenging things, really, is co- like the ma- finding the right makeup and hair artist. Um, it is that it's is, hard. That is sure. reliable. Do right. you find that in your business? Do you yeah, some- yeah, and I'm very lucky, and I have a, had a few people that have worked with me for like literally years and and years, four, five, six, seven years, and I've had a few people. And and what, what I do, and this, like I told you, I was doing an interview last week with one of my makeup artists who didn't charge her Bluetooth headset, and the whole <laughs> thing went. We have to redo this, but uh, not only do they have to be a you know, with the hair and the makeup, but they also have to be this calming force. Cause as you know, when you're working mm-hmm. with women, they're very nervous when they come in, like, ah, they right. it's going to be all right. You're going to serve. So they, it, there's more to it. I think uh, for a good makeup person, they have to be very good with people, not just the, the makeup and getting them calmed. Especially with boudoir. Them... That's, you know, yeah. very nerve wracking. Sure. Even for yeah. a regular photo shoot like this, they get nervous. Women get nervous. Yeah. And so makeup, there's a lot of people, like, I guess it's like anything else that enter this field um, but you know, there's a, a few that sort of rise to the top and it's, uh, you got to do a little bit of work and a little bit of luck to find someone, like you said, that's reliable, that's going to do good work and it's, and it's going to be with, uh, um, or it's going to show up, you know, regularly. Right. Or someone, well, I have a photo shoot tomorrow and my makeup artist just cancel on me, yeah. uh, for tomorrow because of the coronavirus. Oh yeah. Well that, well, that's a big fear. So now, now the uh, fear is spreading and I have to yeah. scramble to find someone find else somebody. last minute for tomorrow. Cause I can't cancel my photos, but I can't do that to, to my client. So these are real challenges I, for me. That is kind of a challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, having uh, several different makeup artists to go to, I guess is a, well, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll give you a few names when we're done with it. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you a couple names. Okay. Well, they travel to Long I'm, Island. I don't know. I'll see. I get they go because these women I know they go all over New Jersey for uh, for for weddings because I'm you know more central. They're all over the place. Yeah, uh, I've had I've have client. I have a lot of clients from New Jersey. Believe it or not. So for branding for photography, they, they did drive out. Um, I do have a photo shoot. I am coming to New Jersey because my parents actually live in New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. So I have figured I'll I'll do that. Um, I'll pair it together. But yeah. It's, well, makeup is hard, but I guess even in addition to that, it's the styling. Right. Because um, people have to wear the right thing mm-hmm. for for the photos. Are you getting involved in, in that as well, or are there, are there styling people that have to come into play here? I don't have a stylist at this point. I would like to have one as I as I get busier, and I like I said, my kids are getting older, so I'm starting to get more and more involved. Time. I have more time, so... I don't have a stylist right now. It's it's me. I have a couple of different different options. I also offer glamour shots, and I just did a mother and daughter beautiful, f- more fine art kind of style. Right. So I have a couple of options. I always have a couple of options in my space because you just don't know what people to bring. I try to educate them. I think that's one of the most important things, especially for branding, but really for any kind of photo shoot, for them to know what to wear. Because right. of- and, it's, and a lot of people don't know how to dress themselves. 
Right. Or for you know. photography. So for yeah. a, for example, like so people for headshots, they think, OK, well, the button down like a silk button down will look beautiful, which it does in real life. But it does not look good in photos because it adds bulk around the waist. It's it's beautiful in real life, but you need something form fitting. So I yeah. educating them before the photo shoot of what to wear is 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 a is a big deal. I have a, a PDF about that. So I send them a PDF prior to the photo shoot that touches up on it a little bit about the color, what colors to pick and what looks better in front of the camera and tell them, I tell them just to overpack. I'm like, you're probably the only time yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> and cha changing quick clothes is quick. Yeah. And then, um, you know, like I run into, I don't know if you run into this, sometimes people have like a favorite outfit and they're like, this is my favorite thing. And you're looking at it and going, eh, well, well, all right, we'll just take a few, but you know, you're not going to, you're not going to keep them because it just doesn't, yeah. people don't have a great sense of, I think they may love it and that's enough. But in, in this situation, do you ever run into where someone sees something and you're kind of like, well, maybe that's not the best look for you. Do you? Yeah, they definitely bring them. Well, I, I do, I do try to educate them before and I show them examples with the images. Well, this is why this works. This is why this doesn't work. And I tell them, you know, if you to stay away from print and we'll, we'll go over colors. So usually they come somewhat prepared and i like i said i said bring extra stuff so if we don't use i'd rather not use something that us not have enough sometimes it, it works most of the times but sometimes that doesn't even work doesn't work so i have extra like just a couple of simple tops just Lying like around. a black top or something like that that is easy you know wash and something's very simple and neutral that and there's a lot involved yeah. yeah there's a lot involved in that and people don't realize uh ahead of time all the the people and the time and the energy that goes into to doing something like uh, uh like that so who do you think and this is a really tough question to to answer um, but when I look at your portrait work, I'm going to say it has like this bright and airy boudoir -y style to it, more pretty, you know, like, like, oh, really? I, like I, okay. <laughs> it's more bright and it has to be happy, I guess, or uh -huh. when you're, when you're doing, like branding, yeah. Yeah, for, you know, for, for like branding, you don't want dark and moody images, uh -huh. I guess, for people who are like trying to, to, to be bloggers that, that doesn't come across. But is that something that you consciously want to keep things very light and airy or is that just how you, you tend to do it? That's not the best way to ask that question. But if you do you have to develop a style and do you think that you're recognizable through a certain style in that branding photography or is it just kind of you don't think about that? You're not necessarily trying to set up the same lighting every time. It just it kind of it, it is what it is. No, you're right. It's, I do. I am conscious of it. Definitely. I am conscious of it. And I'm conscious of it when I post things on Instagram because I want it to be coherent because mm. my food is kind of similar too. it's very, yeah. it's very bright. It's not like one of those right. dark and moody no. foods. Yeah. So that is my style. While um, I have to say I've been dabbling into more like a portrait wise on a different side, more right. darker and moody kind of photography. But that's just for you know, family photos or something like that, or glamour, like a glamour right. photography. But for branding, yes, mine is very happy, light, and but sophisticated at the same time. Clean lines. I don't like a lot of clutter, and it's just minimalistic, but clean. Go through. Clean. And I just sent you, you may not see that, I sent you a link for a photo through that. If you click on that link, it shouldn't ruin your session. It should, and people at home aren't going to be able to see this, but... This is just one of the, I guess, branding photos that I came across. Okay, so, yeah. So tell me a little bit like this. See, now to me, this is very boudoir -y, uh, or the light and cheery and bright. And it's very pretty. Okay. Um, so what was going on here? And I'll post these photos like in the show notes so people can see what we, we were talking about here. But tell me a little bit about what's going on with this with this situation where there's this. Well, I'll just explain briefly. There's the woman with the laptop in, in the bed and she's sitting in, in a chair and, and holding coffee and uh, um, very well made up and, and a cute outfit, multiple outfits on in there. And what's the, the scenario or what's going on in, in that photo? So here, this is actually her apartment in New York City, and we wanted to convey the message of that she's approachable, right? As you see, like a mug, a white mug, a light and airy. We have that beautiful chair. So just kind of, she looks approachable. She also see that she's blogging, obviously. She works from home. She's working from her bed. She's wearing a cute little uh, button-down shirt. And um, yeah, there's a little bit of a leg showing. <laughs> which would make it would worry and uh it's it's that's kind of the message that we wanted to 
convey that just like a relaxed, kind of a relaxed, homey feel. So people would connect to that, I think. It's, it's happy. Yeah, you say it's always like very relaxed, like you said, an approachable um, type of a look. And what was she doing or what is her, what What was the, the, the point for these photos here? She's a health coach. So this is okay. one of, we, we've shot a lot of recipes at that day too. This was part of the shoot. And she needed some images for her website, for her blog. Okay. So we did kind of, we wanted to see Manhattan that she lives in Manhattan. So we have a little okay. bit of a view the windows, through yeah. the windows. And um, this she's moved since then, but she's also still in Manhattan. I actually inherited that chair. I have it in my studio oh, really? now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. But I don't have Dude, the city a, views <laughs> to go so That's one thing that went in your trunk to go on the well, No, I had to get a moving truck to get that. It wouldn't fit in my trunk, but I do have, I offer that chair. <laughs> No. And so that's interesting. I'm just going to pop one more up on the on the link here. And this is something just a little bit uh, different. This was one of the the food shots. And this is this is probably one from your kitchen. I'm guessing me... this is the one one of the ones that makes me hungry. And I'll let you take a look at this first. Oh, yes. Yes. This is a veggie burger. Yes. Don't you just want to like that? Uh, this is why I said it makes me like very hungry <laughs> when I, I see, but I guess that's the point. That's, that's well, yeah. not to be joking about it, but that's the, that's, that's the goal. If of something it like. makes you hungry. That means it was a successful yeah. photograph. Right. Right. And, and you're like, wow. I, and so what is involved in, in, in doing something like this? Again, we're looking at this delicious veggie burger uh, with looks like avocado and, and tomato on, on top of it Some and um, some lettuce on there. And this does not come off the grill looking like this. I'm guessing. It does a, not. Oh, so <laughs> what? What? What goes into making that look just? And that, was that one that you were doing, or is this for somebody for somebody else? This was, one. Um, this one was for me. Yes, this one I I did on my own. I I believe. Uh, maybe I did it for a client. I, they're all blurring together. This, yeah. I this know. could have been. This could have been a client's. I can't remember that now. It's it's right. It doesn't come out looking like that. And with this image in particular, you want height. So you want to shoot a head on like this. Um, you can't do a flat lay or anything like that. And the the height is as you see that I doubled up on the on the burger part actually. And you want to see. I'm I'm actually salivating right now. So I'm looking at it myself. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go have some food. I was running to her kitchen. <laughs> I'm gonna whip that up quick. No, so it's and then also you have to make sure that the sauce is dripping the at the, the And that doesn't happen like that. So are you at this point where you have like syringes and you're squirting like We have to squirt it. Yeah, we have to squirt it. But I have to say everything in, in the images I shoot, ninety nine percent is all authentic. So mm -hmm. the trend now with all the bloggers and chefs and recipe developers is really to make the photograph look as Real close time. as possible. So if the yeah. person does make it, you're not like, oh, well, this looks completely different than what it is. So right. you do have to, I use real ingredients. Like I don't use any glue instead of sauce. I mean, yeah, I, like the, the real food, essentially. It's real in, food. In I would, maybe the sauces I could modify a little bit, make them thicker or thinner. Some don't, it's sometimes to add maybe a little oil to things or spray mm. things or on, there's a lot of trick that, tricks that go I, I'm it. sure that's a whole nother thing to to because certain things aren't going to look the way for very long that you want them and to, I tell uh, people if I work with them I say well certain things let's say soups or whatnot so undercook certain things because if you're cooking vegetables and stuff they'll lose their color they'll lose a right, right, don't right, cook right, right. to eat it really you could finish it later let's cook it photograph it have a couple of chopped up whatever ingredients do go in it chopped up fresh so we could throw some on the top just to kind of show what it is so you would be responsible for for, for doing this preparation work too if i hired you to do this and, and said we need this this and this you're in your kitchen buying going to uh, wegman's trying to get the best looking lettuce no 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 I, well it really depends on the on the on the job on the client so if uh, the client has a bigger budget and it's like let's say it's for a magazine or something because you know i've worked with other food photographers that are that shoot for magazines and stuff you they have a food stylist come in and do all that oh so they're taking care of that there's a food stylist that, that that there's food stylist there's also prop stylist on top of really? that so that it's so involved yes it's very complicated and just just for a burger just for a burger and so I, I've done a lot of styling, so I, I could do that. And I do have a lot of props. So I kind of, for me, maybe 
for for a blog because they don't have that budget. So they right, right. I could offer all of those things at once because they can't afford hiring a right, right. you know a, and a, a so where did, I guess in Manhattan there are food stylists. Oh yes, it's a, uh, it's a job. Them, yeah, it's a job. I, There's a job as an ice cream scooper. I've worked really? with uh, to get perfect fringy round. Oh really? Uh, the scoop the, that perfect scoop. Yeah, they have custom yeah. made scoops. That wow. to actually so the, scoop the ice cream the so right the, way. It, there's a woman out there somewhere that has like a five thousand dollar special made scooper, and they fly her in in a velvet pouch just to scoop the, the customers. Ice cream, uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. There's food stylists for sure. There are many of them that are food stylists in in Manhattan that that just do, and they do a phenomenal job. And you know, you are as a photographer is really supposed to just control the lighting and sometimes and stay yeah. out of the way, let them do it. So it becomes segregation. There. Well, it becomes, well, thing. you will have to work as a team because they have to understand which angle you are coming from because they could style it one way. Um, Cause I've worked with some people that are beginner foot stylists and they would style it and put it in front of me. I'm like, well, that's not how I was going to shoot it. So I had to like kind of rearrange things cause it's not how the camera sees. So an experienced stylist will kind of understand where, which angle you're shooting from and what, you and they'll angle the let it they'll angle edit everything Correct. to the right. And usually so. when you do food photography, I always tether for those who don't do people probably know do I need to say what tethering yeah. was yeah. connect your camera to the computer so you see the big screen right Live. away. Yeah. So when I shoot food, I always tether so we both see when the same we're and on make the adjustments screen. on the fly. I'll make sure. adjustments. This needs to turn, this needs to turn. So the food styles would see. So not all of them are created equal, but it's a no. it's a job. Food stylist, yes. Yeah, so that's how it is. It is complicated, and all this for a bean burrito. I'm going to do one more here because okay. I'm going to torture you again. And make no, you I like it. I want to. See, interesting to more see what, again, I'll, what you. I'll post these photos like. in the notes so these people driving have no idea what we're talking about here. But this is. Oh, this is before this is I change my my screen name. <laughs> this is uh, one other. Uh, yeah, this is. I was digging deep in the archives. Oh, you did. You did travel back. Were, oh, I forgot about these. Okay. So this is, uh, tell me a little bit about this. It's like a fruit tart or it's no, a pastry. No, this is actually a, to a toast. So toast, it, oh, toast. it's a, a whole wheat bread mm. with oh, yeah, almond right, yeah. butter on top of it with a fresh organic raspberries and just a little bit of that green mint as a pop. So this is mostly color and um, kind of composition. This was a snack that I would, yeah, I was, I was giving my kids at home. <laughs> so this is just... This is at home with Oksana yeah. on a Wednesday afternoon. Right. Well, not always like that, but yeah, <laughs> this is uh, what I was, I was trying to, I was playing around with it, you know, the compositions and coloring and, and testing. Certain and you cut things. every raspberry in half and just laid it on there with a little sprig on, uh, on top some or those whole berries. Some of them are cut. Yeah. Some of them are cut and they strategically placed each one of them is. Yes. And then the idea, though, again, is it grabs somebody's eye. It makes something look like super, super delicious in that photo. And then a little bit on the on the technical side, what's going on around this? Or what are you doing to, is this natural lighting on here? Because I don't see any harsh shadows. It doesn't look like there's a lot, it, it, like a light interference here. It just looks very simple and, and clean. Yes, this, um, was from, this was shot with natural light, which I don't use a lot. I don't do a lot of natural lighting now, but I was shooting this because I was in my kitchen. I had beautiful window light um, next to it. I had a, I had a door to go outside, so which kind of, I could put this on the chair or something on the table right near and I had a beautiful, I would use the natural light from the window and on the opposite side, I would put in a white, white foam board or something just to bounce a little reflect bit of reflect or a little bit of light back to get rid of the sh harsh shadows and just leave a tiny bit for, of, of the shadows. Cause it's pretty, that's something you could frame and put on your wall in your, in your kitchen it's it's uh i think yeah. it's uh yeah, it's very nice but one one sort of a technical thing here and it's something that always drives me nuts i know when i work but even little things like white balance in in a photo like this can change the way everything looks it could be too warm it could be too cool mm -hmm. um how do you work with that to keep everything on point and i'm guessing if this is something that does have to go to print that's super important and keeping everything uh very you know balance color balance properly is that something that you have to get involved with when you're doing that? yes i i do sometimes if i work with a client i do shoot especially with natural lighting there's a lot of color cast so yeah, the, yeah. this when i was when i was shooting depending on the season 
I, where I was shooting. So let's say it was in the summer. There was a lot of green outside. So I would just get a lot of green collar casts on it. So I, um, I do, I do take a picture of a gray card and I just try to balance, balance it. it out that way. Yeah, I do. But when I work with clients, I definitely do that. Sometimes yeah, because even oh, people don't think even the color of the paint in the room reflects and can change the way. Absolutely. Look the... Yes, absolutely. So I do use, I do use the card. Did you... It's tricky. That's a very hard part of it. I'm not very good at that. Uh, I use cards sometimes. Sometimes I try to the color match or in a uh, light room, try to get things balanced. But to me, that's, eh, it's not as super important, but I'm guessing if you're sending a picture like that to somebody, everything needs to be spot on. And Correct. Any issues, any issues with that or no, you have that, that system all kind of figured out. Um, I, I haven't had any complaints. Uh, the only thing I would, I would, was getting requests on sometimes was to sharpen it more. So let's see, this is, you know, I'm, I'm, shooting on shallow depths of field, right? No, that's to what I was going to say that. too. Everything is very shallow. So, so sometimes I would send it to clients. Well, depending on the food, right? This is, was the, this was the image. This was the mood that I was going for. And I was shooting mm -hmm. this for myself. So when I shoot for clients, it's definitely higher, um, aperture and I would try to get more in focus, but let's say it's a salad. And sometimes, I don't know, people tend to go, there was, it was, a, it was a big trend going with all the bloggers where they were like oversaturating everything and they were over sharpening everything. And when my clients would say, so I mean, they say, I want a shot like that. I'm like, Oh, it doesn't even look good. Normal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you want this. This looks oversaturated. This looks over processed and they just wanted that like look. And that was the, the, the trendy thing at the, at the time. So I guess that comes down to, yeah, they're, if they're paying you and you give them what they want and that even though it not be, may not be your in your preference but those things tend to change and they tend to uh to, to come and go is there any other trends you see like you mentioned like uh real food or you know now when you see a commercial on tea for like mcdonald's or something they show the hamburger that's this big yeah. and then when you go to get it it's really like oh my yeah. god that big so yeah. there is definitely a trend to keep things more real now or keep the ingredients real yes. when you're doing yeah like especially that. on online with the, for the blogs and 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 the recipe developers and nutritionists that's definitely they want to keep it as authentic as possible and how about do they have any input in the style that you use because me personally I, i'm not very good with gear i like to keep things as simple as I possibly can. Um, and you mentioned some of these are natural light, but when there's a situation where it's not natural light and you're indoors, getting that look is hard, that bright and airy uh, kind of feel. What kind of lighting setup do you use or is, there, is it depend on the situation? For food? Yeah. I do, I bring my soft boxes with me. So I have a, a rectangular soft box which replicates the window really. So I, I, I don't find, I actually, I find that easier now. I've done a lot of, I, I, once you start using strobes, it just, you get, you used, get to used to it. it and there's just so much more light control. And once you know how to use it, it's, you could work in different situations. I find it harder now to not harder, but more um, inconvenient to use natural lighting because there's constantly, well, I, I, it's, it's constantly changes. There's a cloud goes by and I have to adjust my shutter speed. I have to adjust this or even your white balance changes, you know, yeah. All, yeah, of yeah, that, right. all of that changes. And but once I set my strobes a certain way and I have the light backdrop backdrop and I, so to go back to your question, you asked me if I want f for food photography, I usually use, um, a softbox, a large softbox, which replicates the window. It looks like so the little highlights, specular highlights, they do look like a window. So do always on or flash or is it always on lights? It's not or, continuous. It's strobe. It's continuous. flash. Yeah, it's strobe lighting, okay. not continuous. I mean, I could have modeling light on just to see where it's falling. But because I'm tethered to the computer, I see the image you right away it. and I could turn it up or down as I need. And I either use a reflector white, white card or silver card if it needs more reflection on the other side, or I put like a smaller, a smaller soft box on the opposite side to fill in the harsh shadows. It really depends what kind of look I'm going for. And there's more control. And I guess once you get that figured out, you, you kind of know your basic setup and everything that needs to go with that. And you can fine tune it from, uh, um, uh, from there. And I, I, let me tell you, I learned the hard way because I did one of those hard photo shoots where I had to pack up my trunk and I brought all my lighting and I logged everything up and I was shooting and I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to bring my cord for the light to plug in the, the strobe lighting. 
I mm. just left it at home. I mean, it can happen. With, with all the equipment, and I mean, I have a list of bring everything, and usually the cord is it must have fell off when I was putting in the trunk, so I, I couldn't get it anywhere at that point. It was B and H was closed. I think they closed on Saturday, Sundays. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I couldn't run to B and H, and I didn't want to waste a whole hour. And that we were just like, I said, all right, I'm just going to shoot with natural light. Find a window, like I used to. So, and I remember that day and I was like, I can't, well, this is, you know, this is tough once you get used to your certain routine and. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to stroke. break it, but you're right. That makes sense using that because it's more controlled. You can know, you can get an exact outcome. If a, if a cloud comes by, it's going to change everything. So in that situation, unless they ask for, I guess, natural light. She doesn't care. They don't really care. It's just, as long, They just want beautiful pictures. They don't good. care how they you accomplish it to them it didn't she didn't seem phased by it at all i because i well i try not to panic in, in front of her <laughs> i try to keep calm. i try to keep calm and she's known i've worked with natural lighting with her before so she knows that we could do it she and um but inside i was just so mad at myself like how could i forget this and but but you you made you made it out all right you, you made it through i did well, well the good thing i started as a, nat a natural light photographer so it's just going back to your roots i guess it's always good to know how to do natural lighting because if you don't yeah, have it's a hard kid, yeah no and see am i what i used to to do is first of all i just hate lugging things around but mm -hmm. but secondly i think it always just got in the way especially if you're working with a woman hold on i got to move this light and hold on i got to. it just gets in the way to me and mm -hmm. big things going off in, in somebody's face and sometimes i do have one little for like forever all i used was a speed light i would set it and i would use a little bit if it was cloudy or something like that now i i went for broke and got one of these 200 hundred dollar or 300 hundred dollar like uh, mini strobes that has like a battery in it. it comes from adorama i forget what it's called uh, evolve 200 or something. It's a tiny, like one step up from like a, from like a, uh, a, uh, what am I trying to, a, uh, flash. And I just want to keep that gear to a minimum because I think it just gets in the way when you're working with somebody. And when you're with the women, you just want to have you and them, you know, I don't think that all that, that, uh, gear gets in the way. So I kind of eliminated that. I used to store it more than I don't really need this. And I don't really need this. Um, so I just prefer to keep it simpler, but that's, that's just me, and that's just the way I, you I, I tend to work in natural light. Yeah, and I do have something with me, like I said, on a cloudy day, just to to have a little bit of a of a fill light. Is but I don't continuous? like cords. No, it's just like a, a flash, and I have a very kind of a. I don't bring soft boxes or stuff like that. It has this like I don't know what you call like a globe head. You just okay. put it on. It's okay, like a okay. uh, like a flash bulb kind of or a, a strobe kind of a head, and it's just like a like diffuser a that lighting, goes on there. Yeah, just a, a real soft kind of a of a fill light. Um, just because I like again simple, pretty, sort of like a natural uh, type of a look. I'm not one of those people that photographs a lot of harsh shadows. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those dark kind of photographer so to me it just keeps bright and, oh, yeah, and cute kind of a work photography is beautiful well thank you thank you i'm very self-conscious about that no no it's i'm, not, I'm beautiful work. not very good taking praise but i'm always working i'm always the i still at this point when i work with somebody i come home and i'm when i'm looking at that i'm like what could have i had done better what could i have improved or how could i have moved her this way or this way and then really that's how crazy i am and i'll make the notes the next time i'll, I'll do to do this and this and this and i'm still always trying to add more poses um into my work but it's this never-ending thing to try to become um the best at whatever it is that you do and that's just that's just uh how i uh how i operate but that's, but you're always having... evolving that's how you learn yeah, you practice yeah. not not theory you could watch someone else do it but unless you do it and perfect it you're never gonna and i just you know you always have your points where like oh am i good enough or well i go through that too mm -hmm. where am I, is my photography good enough and i we always self-doubt i could have done this better i could have done bad that better and you'll always be evolving i mean I, when i look i just was cleaning out my stuff and I pulled out my old external hard drive and I looked at some of those boudoir pictures in 2008 and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe can't people believe bought that. <laughs> uh, and that's that's another thing I always talk about with people because I do talk to a lot of boudoir photographers. Like, do you remember your first session and how bad yeah. was it? You know, because I think everybody... <laughs> Is it, you just don't get to that point of where everything looks good. There's always, and what people don't think, there's always, everyone starts somewhere and there's always those first sessions that weren't the best and you kind of, you kind of uh, work your way through it. And I think the idea is you always have to keep working to get better. And I think the 
the biggest misconception in, in photography, no matter what you do, and you see this online, you see this everywhere, is people think it's so simple. It's like you you go to Adorama, you buy a camera, you get a website, and now you're a pro. Mm -hmm. And there's anything further from the truth than that. And I have sometimes people messaging me about becoming like a, a professional full-time photographer. And I say, it's about as easy as becoming a professional full-time guitarist. Like how many people do you know make a living with just with a guitar in a, in a rock band? It's not like you can go to a guitar center, say, I want the same model as Eddie Van Halen. And the, and the, the, the you know, people are going to start attacking you to get you to join their band. It doesn't work that way. And I think that's the one big misconception in photography is there's this message out there that that's exactly how it works. And there's anything further from the truth. And I'm guessing you can back me up. I there. could back you up and I could add to that because I think not only that you have to be so good at your scale that you do right you have to be a great photographer which take pra takes practice and practice and practice but you also have to be a business person so that's the people that i think that's the part people don't realize that how much admin stuff that goes into it and you know you want to you have to market yourself you have to answer emails you have to do the tax it's, it's it's just like any other business so you have to wear that hat on top of it so it's not just like oh i'm gonna go and be creative you know some of my friends just say to me always like i'll get dms or messages from them like oh my god i want i want your job like you, your job looks so fabulous looks so amazing like you don't know the behind the scenes of it you don't know they canceled the makeup artist canceling you don't know right. like or what the client the last canceling moment, yeah. or or it's just there's just so much more that goes that, that goes into it, the corresponds and then the educating people. You have to love all, all of it. Well, I don't love all of it. And then the retouching. That's very, very time. Yeah, that's another I hate. That's my least favorite part of 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 all this. That's a lot of work. That's most of the work. Do you outsource it? No, I do it myself. I couldn't see. I'm the kind of person that I couldn't stand somebody else because that has to be me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, again, want to keep things very simple, very seamless. I I. A long time ago, I I could save a lot of my time by getting it right up front. You know, I frame pictures exactly how I want them. I get the light how I want it. Very, very little because it can take so much time, um, you know, afterwards uh, doing that. So I try to get as most of it right up, up front. Little things that, that I fix, but I couldn't I couldn't let it, somebody else do that. I couldn't outsource that because right. then it wouldn't be mine. And you have no control on how they may change or, or, or do something. And the posing but I don't have... is, is crucial, I think. The posing is crucial because that's so much could be done with posing where you don't have to retouch that. And then well, you're good at that. And, and I will finish up here soon. I want to keep it too long, but I noticed you're doing more portrait work oh, yes, too. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With what, so who's coming to see you for that now? Like uh, what type of woman is, or who was your client now that's coming in to do some portraits? So um, other than branding, I've been, this is kind of like a new avenue for me. I've never done that. I've been enjoying because it works. I work mostly with women, even with branding. So it's kind of like my, my style that women are drawn to. And, so kind of a, a woman, any woman that's, I would say, in 40s and 50s, maybe that not that she's been forgotten, but she's been a mom for a while and she hasn't felt beautiful and she doesn't want to go for a full boudoir. She doesn't feel comfortable with herself. So like the glamour photo session where she wear, could wear a beautiful gown and get her makeup and the hair done. I just had a photo shoot on the other day, a mom and the daughter and the mom felt felt amazing. It was a mom, mother and daughter day. She was, she was, the girl was 10 and she came with her mom and they both just felt beautiful for a day. And it's just an heirloom that they're going to keep forever. So forever, the two of them. And yeah, and the posing and all of that, it's not much different than boudoir in terms of you have to pose them in the right way. Yeah, because people don't know what to don't know what to do and their hands are like, I don't know where to put my hand. Right. So it takes a little it takes a little practice to learn how to do that. But I can I saw I think I guess I was looking at your Instagram and I saw a couple on there that were portrait styles. There was a woman in a black dress. Right, right. The and flowy dress, like I'm you have the fans the all fan, going. Have you have someone throwing the <laughs> throwing the uh the dress in the uh well they're the in supermodel the for the day. That's what I tell that's them. Right. It's well, that's good. The pictures are, are, are very nice, but again, that's, there's more work involved in that than what sort of, you know, meets the eye on, on, in the front of that picture. So you're okay doing that in, in like studio where is that you're going in Manhattan to do that? No, that's that in, that's in my space. Yeah. 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 I had a, I had a makeup out hard to stay and for a little bit and help me, um, do the dress flowing and blowing and. <laughs> 
Do I know it's good? Because nobody has nice pictures of themselves. Um, so that's something I always do with my people. I tell them to bring dresses, and I don't get that involved with in, in that, but I always like to do some portraits for people at first. And they're like, why? I don't want to do this. But those photos get the most mileage because no one, you know, well, not every, well, this, I shouldn't say that, but, you know, wants to show grandma or mom pictures of themselves with no clothes on. So they take these pictures in the dresses, and they, they're very proud of them, and they can show them to lots of people. So it, it's good. I think women need to do more well, I used to do like that. that. Too. Too, like, now that you mentioned, I used to tell people when they did boudoir, I said, bring a dress or something a little bit more modest just so you could frame it. I said, you will have your makeup and hair done and these you will show to your significant other or yourself, whatever it is. But you want to maybe frame one or two. You want to you right. want to share that right. on your profile or wherever. So just bring that dress. And also you could market that because some people are not comfortable you're posting that. Now that. I found that very limited right. with boudoir right. because people I was photographing a lot of but teachers. <laughs> Yeah, teachers or professionals. And I understand that. And, and, you know, but now that's changed, too, where a lot of people do. They, it's just not as secretive oh, really? as yeah. it used to be 10 years ago. Uh, you know, there's always jobs like teachers where, where you can't. But that has changed. I found that's changed a lot where people are like, yeah, hey, you can use my picture. That's fine. So. It, it, OK, well, that's, it's, that's I like great. The, not only that, you could sell people very expensive wall art. Yes. You know, if, you, if you do, shh, shh, if you do these portraits, it's just another avenue that you can make some money from. Um, mm -hmm. If you do like women's portrait photography, that's what I've been uh, doing. I've been going towards print, and you know, I want I tell them that you know you want. Don't stop hiding behind the camera as a mom. You're always taking pictures of your kids and you're always behind the camera. Just what will your kids find of you when they grow up, when they look for you, when, you know, when you're gone, what will they see? A selfie? No, let them show you what you really are, like your inner beauty. It's important. I think people, more people need to do that. We're going to start a trend. We're going to get more people okay. to come in to <laughs> women's uh, portrait uh, work. I just, yeah, put all, yeah. I just added one more thing to your point now. <laughs> you're... Like that I have to be a chart changing women's portrait photography in America. I'm not coming on this show anymore. I feel like well, I want that. Th yeah, I know. I, I agree. Do. I do. And people don't know they're missing it because they never had it. Yeah. That's that's really what that comes down to. And when they see those nice pictures, uh, it's it's really it, it, like it's hard to it's describe, life but they love experience. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you have the one I saw watching your one Instagram. I guess you have a little reveal wall. Yes. And you know the woman. I can't believe it. That's a they great. Cry. That's a great feeling. Yeah, I know. And to see it in print, though, it makes such right. a big difference. It's, it's a, right. If you send it to them online, they might love it. Yes, but you know, it makes it real. It print and, and it, touching it, it and right. having it t a right. tangible something that right. they could just it's stick and put on the wall. And it's a whole different point. experience. And that's a very unexpected part of doing that work that you don't think about is that change, how you can impact, even if it's for a short time, how you can impact somebody's life like that and make their day a little bit better, you know, where otherwise they, and it's a short, it's a small gap. You're really bridging that gap between how they see themselves and what they really are. And you can connect those two things and it's not that far of a distance. And then you can create that, that happiness and, in somebody's life. So that's part of the magic of that, but that's for another, that's for another episode yeah, <laughs> or another time. Yeah. I don't want to keep you too, too long. You've been, thank you for coming on well, thank uh, today. Thank you so we, much for having me. We covered like a, a lot of ground and see now I, if I need some new branding photos, I'm only going to you. I wouldn't trust anybody. <laughs> oh, else, so thank you. I'm going to be, I would, this would crack your camera. Like, no, though, it this face. No, You'd no, be like, no, no. There, would, there wouldn't be enough makeup artists <laughs> on the East coast to, uh, no, 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 don't say that to, uh, to, uh, do that. And then, uh, I'm going to be inviting myself over to your house too, for some of those veggie burgers, for veggie burgers uh, and to look at my tile. Right. Okay, I'll do <laughs> you your tile veggie burger and, and do the, uh, tile do, do some, yeah. uh, some, some, some work, but just one last thing before we, uh, go and this is again not a super easy question to to answer but and anybody starting like in in photography business like now um what do you think you is like sort of one piece of basic advice you may give to somebody just starting whether it is in boudoir or portrait or or food photography um something that you know now that you wished you knew back when you were when you were starting um no, uh, there's so much. <laughs> I'm just trying to narrow it down. It's, I would say, don't overwhelm yourself with a lot of gear. You just a lot of people just go out and start buying and buying and buying and thinking that it's going to improve their craft. I didn't start buying strobe lighting, and, and for a while I was a natural light shooter. Um, I would say 
stay consistent and don't give up. Like your work will get better. You, we will all have, we get excited. We get like one good shot and then we think we're great. And then the next day we're so hard on ourselves and we it just, it's kind of like an up and down road. I would say, say consistency is the most important thing. And I have to remind myself of that, that I have to be more consistent on social media, but even with your work, just be consistent. And if you just ask your friends, ask your family, ask and shoot who, whoever you can, just get as much practice as you want. And then the work eventually will come once you get better. It'll will take care it. of itself. It will yeah. take care of itself. Just don't, yeah, just keep, keep going. Just don't, don't give up. I think that's, I think that's, I've, I've slowed down many times before, well, kids or this or that. And I just, you know, kind of stop myself. I would have, I feel like I would have been much further along than I am if I didn't continuously. Like I, I would put myself on the pause for two years as I was doing a PTA president. They need a break sometimes. Yeah. Just- and then I, but then I felt like I was starting from scratch again. So just keep going and do at, le- at least a little bit, you know, at least a little bit on a consistent basis. Right. So practice makes perfect. Yes. Don't give up. Practice makes advice. progress. That's what one of my kids told practice, me the other day. Words of advice. Oh, there <laughs> yeah, you go. Said, not perfect. Practice makes progress. I was like, you know progress. what? You got me on that because it's not about right. perfection. It's about go. for progress and pro- movement. Forward. Words to live by <laughs> from Oksana Pop. <laughs> and where can everybody find you? Where can we find your delicious food photos and everything else that you do um, on the interwebs? So everything is on my website. It's OksanaPolly.com. It's O K S A N A. P-A-L-I.com. com and on Instagram it's um, my handle is Oksana O K S A N A dot P A L I. And that's where I live on, uh, on my website <laughs> and on Instagram. Perfect. And you did it. Yes, you did, I did it. it. Thank you so much for having me. This You're was welcome. so much fun. I hope I yeah, it was a lot of fun to talk to you. Okay. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Bye.